Hi, it's Dave from Roman Astro, and I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. What do you do if it gets too hot and your sky is too bright? So I'm driving up to Payson, and I'm driving up to Payson for two reasons. First of all, to escape the heat, where it's just hot, hot days. And of course, I can't take my astrophotography rig out and expect to use my camera and my little mini PC when it's at 9 o'clock at night and it's still above 100 degrees. So, one of the options I have is to scoot up here to Payson, and so that's what I'm in the process of doing. Now, Payson is at about a little, little over 5,000 feet in altitude, and it's in, it's kind of the, the foothills, if you will, of the section of Arizona called the White Mountains, and it gets it gets warm, but it doesn't get hot, not Phoenix hot. And even though it will get warm, at nighttime it's going to cool right down and get down into the 70s and 60s quite comfortably. And that's what I'm looking for because if I can, if I can get nighttime temperatures down into the 70s, then I'll be able to use my astrophotography gear. But there's another reason I'm coming up here, and that's to escape, as much as I can, the Phoenix Light Dome. Phoenix, at least in my backyard, it averages between a Bortle 8 and Bortle 9. It just kind of depends on how many lights are on in my area. I've got two schools, and when they both got their lights on, and my neighbors have their lights on, my skies are easily, easily Bortle 9. It's a white zone. So this promises to be more of a dark zone. I'm thinking probably Bortle 3. It'd be nice if it was Bortle 2, but I don't know if I'll be that lucky. I know last time that I was up here, about three, four weeks ago, just to kind of check things out, I did notice that you could still see a little bit of a light dome to the south which is, of course, Phoenix. So, anyways, I'm gaining here an altitude, and I'm driving up, and once I get here, I will start looking for a dark place. Well, my guiding is crap. <laughs> I'm within um, I'm within my image scale, 1.62 um, arc seconds, uh, because my guiding is like 1.39, which is really horrible. I tonight so far has been a comedy of errors. As you can see here, what I wanted to photograph was the lagoon and the Triffid Nebula and so I'm um, doing that and I'm shooting LRGB and then um, hydrogen alpha of course sulfur 2 and oxygen 3 and I'm gonna put them all together um, I think I'm in like Bortle 2 skies or Bortle 1 skies it's pretty it's pretty dark 
Um, you can see a little bit of sky glow over there, which is Phoenix, but it's like very faint on long, very faint along the horizon. It's not very, very obvious. So where the comedy of errors comes in is I brought two mounts, brought my Lost Mandy up, and I brought my EQR6 up, and I had set my AstroTech 80 millimeter on the Lost Mandy because I did not, I had forgotten that um, the Rokinon 135 is on a Vixen uh, dovetail plate. And the Lost Mandy doesn't take Vixen, it's just a Lost Mandy, which is what you would expect from a Lost Mandy. Um, and so I had to, at the last minute, switch mounts with the telescopes. Normally I pair my 80 millimeter with my EQ6R Pro, and I usually do my RC6 using the Lost Mandy. And as you can see here, my guiding is just crap, and it's all over the place. 1.37. Um, it just is not settling down. I think I made some configuration changes um, because I was on the Lost Mandy, and then I moved back over to here. And anyways, all of my configuration settings that I had for PHD2 got changed. I'm at one second, um, one second here on my, so I'm going to, let me bump this to, I'm just curious, let me see what happens if I go to half a second, if it uh, levels out any better. But anyways, um, but the tracking on the Lost Mandy was so horrendous that I just stopped my imaging session. I got maybe three or four subs in and just stopped it and uh, swapped it back over to the EQ6R Pro, which, well, to be honest with you, is not that much better than what the Lost Mandy was. Um, back home, I'm used to seeing, you know, 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, maybe up to 0.7. Here I'm in dark, bordel two skies, and I kind of expect really great guiding. Now again, I'm guiding just like 20 degrees above the horizon, and so I usually don't shoot that close to the horizon just because it's really kind of soupy and really difficult to guide. And I think that's what I'm seeing here, is that I'm just so close to the horizon shooting this, um, shooting this target that it's just making for some really lousy guiding. So anyways, uh, this, is the, this is the Lagoon Nebula, and this is the Trifid. And again, I'm going to be shooting this in LRGB as well as hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And then I'll put all the pieces together. And as long as my guiding stays below 1.62, I should be OK. That's my image scale. And you can see here that there's a small little cluster right here. And then there's some nebulosity right up over here. Uh, what filter am I on? I'm on the green filter right now. So this is or it was green filter. This, yeah, this is a red filter right here. The green hasn't finished yet. Good lord, guiding is just going bonkers. I'm just not used to seeing such poor guiding. It's like I'm not quite sure what to do. It's like I really want to shoot this because I'm in a dark sky and it's kind of chilly out and so my camera is doing great it doesn't have to be um, overtaxed trying to get the thing to be chill and yeah so
so we shall see but it's almost 11 o'clock and it, it took me an hour just to find Polaris there's so many friggin stars <laughs> because I'm not used to seeing so many stars I mean in my Bortle 8 backyard if you can pick out the big major stars you're doing really really good um, here it's just like a cacophony of stars they're just all over the place and so it's hard to pick out it's like which one's Polaris so anyways uh, yeah it took me about an hour to polar align and I got spot on polar alignment so I kind of expected my guiding to be good but I think because the the object that I'm shooting is so low to the horizon um, I'm actually about a degree further north of Phoenix and so it's even further down the horizon than it would be in the Phoenix area and I just because the night is so short I'm willing to accept the horde guiding if I can get some decent images out of this tonight I'd be happy because it is a bore 2 sky even though I've got six hours of imaging maybe I can rescue three hours and that might be enough to at least get a decent image we'll see so anyways if I got a decent image you'll see it here shortly